Okay, welcome to this video on writing a linear function given two points. I'm calling this the rate of change method. This was not my uh, creation. This is something I saw on the internet. Um, it's handy if you want to be able to go both to standard form or slope intercept form. Uh, I will admit that the background as to why this works, I'm not giving good background here. I really should, but I just don't quite have the time to get it into this video. Maybe someday I'll make that video. Here's how it works. I am going to put my points in table form. And for simplicity, I want to list the coordinate with the smallest x value first, which is this one. So I'm going to go negative 2, negative 1, 3, and negative 6. And what I do is I go into this set of coordinates and say, OK, what is the change between these two? It looks like my x's go up 5 and my y's go down 5. So somehow, that's what I'm multiplying here. Now, we switch things around a little bit because I must be doing something to y times 5 to get these x's to go up and something times negative 5 on the x's for them to go down. At least that's the theory. We got some other change here. I'll use c for change. Uh, we got to figure out what that C is, so I need to pick a checkpoint. I'm going to choose this one. Negative 6 is the Y. X is 3. And we do a little math here because we can simplify. These are just numbers. And uh, let's keep solving for C. Let's add 15 and add 15. And I get a C value of negative 15. All right, I want to plug that back in at this step. So 5y equals negative 5x minus 15. And I can do two different things at this point. Technically, this is a linear function at this point. It just doesn't look like in the form your teacher would want. Uh, the first thing I could do is I could get this guy to uh, standard form real quickly. I can add 5x to each side and get 5x equal, oh, not equals, sorry, plus 5y equals negative 15. And your teacher may say, oh, hey, we could divide everything by 5, but that's a perfectly acceptable function right there. Um, I could also leave this alone. Let me just do a different color real quick. What if I wanted this to be in slope intercept? So I'm going to divide everything in this original equation by 5. And I get y equals, uh, let's see, negative 1x minus 3. Same thing. I would consider either of these to be a very correct form. All right. Let's try another one here. Let me erase all of this, and let's do uh, another set of points. Let's do 2 comma 5, 4 comma 8. Okay, I want to shortcut this a bit. I won't write the whole table. In fact, I don't even have to always have the smallest x on top. Uh, on this, I'm going up 2. On this side, I'm up 3. I must be doing something times 2 on the y's to get those to go up that much, and something times 3 on the x's to get them to go up at that kind of pattern. And I got my mysterious c that I might be adding or subtracting. Uh, let's pick a checkpoint here. 2 and 5 look good. So 2 times 5 equals 3 times 2. 10 equals 6 plus C. C must equal 4. I want to take this guy back over here. So 2Y equals 3X uh, plus 4. And at that point, I can do a lot of different things. Um, let's go to slope intercept first. So let's divide everything by 2. So Y would equal 3 halves X plus 2. 
I could also rewrite this, bring the 3x term over here. So I'd have negative 3x plus 2y equals 4. There's a bit of a math thing that says this should never be a negative out front, if that's the way your teacher likes it. Uh, even though I find this correct, multiply the whole thing times negative 1. 3x minus 2y equals negative 4. This is a good correct answer. I believe that's a good correct answer. And there it is in slope intercept form. Again, I realize I'm doing a really bad job of the why behind this works. Um, I, maybe I'll get a video someday of the why on this, of what is actually happening here. All right. Let's, uh, I'm going to leave a couple example problems, uh, two problems. I want you to try them and then watch the video to see how you did. Uh, let's do negative 1, negative 8, and negative 3, negative 2. And the second one I'll leave with you is 4 and 17, 8 and 11. I will work these out. I will only put it in slope intercept form. So it'll be a form of y equals mx plus b when I'm done. Pause the video and try to work them out. Okay, here we go, guys. It looks like on this, this is going down 2 while this is going up 6. So I put negative 2y. Yes, I realize these are the x terms. But something's happening to the y to get those x's to do that. This is 6x, and I'm going to put a c there because there might be some other change I don't know about. Um, I'm going to choose the top one for my checkpoint. So negative 2 times negative 8, 6 times negative 1 plus c. I get positive 16, negative 6 plus c, add the 6 to both sides, 22 equals c. Uh, plug him back in, negative 2y equals 6x plus 22. Divide everything by negative 2 to get it in a point, a slope intercept form, negative 3x minus 11. And there you go you have the form uh, that you want. All right, uh, let's do this other one. Let's do 4, 8, 4, 17 and 8, 11. My x's are going up 4. These guys are going down 6. Um, so we go 4y. Again, notice it. these are the x's, but something's happening to the y's to get the x's to do this. Negative 6x plus c. Uh, we'll pick a checkpoint. Um, I like this one. We'll go with that. Uh, let's see. So 4 times 11 equals negative 6 times 8. 44 equals negative 48 plus c. Add 48 to both sides. You get what? I think 92 as my c. Let's put it back in to this part. 4y equals negative 6x plus 92. Divide everything by 4 to get it in the correct form. y, oh, I'll move up here. y would equal negative 6 fourths, which I can simplify. And I believe that's 23. And there you go. The rate of change way of getting a function between two points. Thanks for watching.